um, through this uh, AI too. So, let me, okay. So effectively, um, firstly, what let's let's have a quick explanation of what is GitHub Copilot. GitHub Copilot actually can wave from three different areas. It is a commercial product. It's uh, offered by Microsoft and GitHub. Your GitHub acquired Microsoft. How it works is that using the OpenAI um, 2 uh, LM model 3.5 and 4 um, with the latest version. And they specifically um, learned for all the GitHub code. And then it's specially designed for um, engineers. You can do the requirement, you can do the um, programming, you can do the testing, <clears throat> um, you can do documentations, number of different things you can do. <clears throat> and effectively, it's very um, automated too, and it's been highly uh, investigate. It's one of the best in in the offer, and that's what we do. So what we what we try to do here is that really uh, we try to do experiments to try out how good is this too, and shall we use it within um, our organization or not? So how does it work? So very quickly, here's just like a down version. What you can see is that. You write something and then you, you write your documentations and what you try to tell them what you, what, um, you want to achieve. And your compiler is going to generate the code that actually tells you, um, you know, what convert your requirement into a code and see if that should you need or not. If you're, if you're happy with that, you can accept it or you can reject it. And then not, normally it would take, give you up to 10 different recommendations in terms of what um, it can be done. <clears throat> and that's pretty much the how GitHub Copilot worked. And with the latest um, addition to what is actually chat, so the chat is actually built on top of a chat GPT UI, and you can ask specifically what you want to do with your code, you can fix it. Like see, please scan for my security, if any security vulnerabilities, <clears throat> if can you please documentation this code for me, can you please explain this code for me? Can you do the conversion from say from Java to C sharp to Python to R, whatever language you may have? And we found out it actually works pretty well with COBOL as well. So mainframe is actually applicable. <clears throat> and here, what we what we did um, in our paper is that we have a seven weeks experiment. You can see the day we got different phases. <clears throat> um, so. How it works is that in the, the actually there's a preface, two weeks prefaces, is that we um, advertise we're going to do some GitHub Copilot experiment within the company and then let engineers come in and then register the interest. We have a norm, uh, quite a huge number of um, engineers registered for the interest. For phase one, we're going to week two, we collect their own use cases. So they can do some study with what they want to try out with. And then for phase one, they can play with to um, do whatever they wanted to do. In do, During this period, we're going to have some interview, we have some survey with them to understand where they're coming from, how they're going, what's the result, how's the outcome. For phase two, we use much more controlled experiments. So we got A-B testing, and we got control group. Um, we got the, um, the group with GitHub Compilers. The, which later down the track, I'm sure the data and how many people in the control group how we segregate the people out. But the idea is that we're going to do the similar, the same task. One is with a key of compiler, one is without key of compiler. <clears throat> and then that will, um, again, we have survey and sentiment analysis as well. And then we have um, data analysis report for week five and week six. And finally, we go week seven to sign off and review. So let's go to the Key part first, this is the key experiment findings. What we find is that, firstly, what you see here is that no matter uh, what's the, your programming capabilities, like either you pro, if the beginner, you just learn programming for a uh, very short period of time, or you're all the way to advanced, what we find is that the actual productivity got do improve just that. For the beginner, you actually improve a bit more compared to the uh, more advancing people. And that's aligned with other findings with similar study conducted by Microsoft, GitHub, and a number of other um, people as well. And secondly, what we find is that with GitHub Copilot, with, because we got different sort of um, interview grade questions, I've asked people to, to 
perform. And what we find is that for the complex for the complex problems, people if you do it manually, it takes much longer time. But for GitHub Copilot, it's sort of um, consistent in, in time wise. <clears throat> As a result, if you're doing very simple problems, simple questions, it probably will not add that much value um, for the um, engineer because you can see it pretty much identical. <clears throat> but once we start to increase complexity, um, you can see it actually become much, much more advanced in using some AI generated too. For your for your program or for engineers, and the other thing what we find is that this is cold smell. Cold smell um, is really is a way to measure what's the cold quality. So the idea is that if your cold quality is low, you have a higher smell um, number, all right. And then for if your cold quality is high, and the cold smell actually much lower. We'll see is that for the menu group and the copilot group. The code smell can be uh, very clearly that GitHub Copilot actually, when it generates code, it actually generates some quality code. Uh, looks like it's better than the, the human's <clears throat> written code as well. All right. <clears throat> so the the idea I think is very very um, clear. Firstly, GitHub Copilot do uh, deliver value. Secondly, it actually improve the co um, code quality as well. <clears throat> and thirdly. The, the performance of the GitHub Copilot actually consistent, which means the more people using, the more complex the problem is, supposedly we should see more benefit by using GitHub Copilot. Okay, all right, and here's a um, survey data summary. So what we can see is that we've got control group and we've got GitHub Copilot group. And this is a total time spent per minute. We got a number of different use cases, but here is like everything um, work out, but you can see the minimum, the quartile, the medium, the mean. So effectively, <clears throat> apart from the maximum, almost everything for the copilot group is actually better. Right. In terms of um, Python proficiency, we got like beginner all the way to expert. And we try to associate our people um, equally between the control group and copilot group. And we do it on the random. We didn't say, okay, I know this programmer is better and then put a group is more uh, randomly assigned. And what we try to do is that we try to make the, um, the uh, number even. You can see 10, 9, 4, 3, and then 22, 22, 6, and 5. We try to make the number even. And then here's the debugging um, time ratio. So how long um, you spend your time for debugging. All right, so what you can see is that for debugging, um, the GitHub Copilot use a bit more time, which is understandable because GitHub Copilot will generate code for you, and you are no longer writing your code. It's more about looking at the code and make a judgment in terms of how I use this code or not. And in terms of difficulty levels, this is the um, the questions we ask them. You can see again, it's pretty even. We try to make it as even as you can. And again, here's the um, um, code quality. So number of code smell per file, control and give quality code. <clears throat> Similar, I just re re repeat myself here. So here the control group is much higher, give quality code is much lower. A minimum number of bugs per file, um, control versus give quality group. The control group actually have more uh, bugs compared to give quality. Give quality for this, in the experiment we designed, it didn't create any bugs. All right, so it's actually pretty um, consistent. And in terms of the unit testing rate and every time spent, what you'll see is that unit test successful rate, if you do it by, um, uh, by menu, by hand, we'll see here like unit test successful ratio. Of course, like your expert, you definitely have a higher unit test, um, unit test success ratio. But if, but if you're a beginner and other people, you will see it's got disadvantage. But for the GitHub Copilot, you can see consistently perform better than any of the any manual work. And here's the um, average time spent against diff different difficulty levels of the, um, the problems. What we see is that for the control group, the, it spent much more time for the um, hard problem than the, um, the GitHub Copilot um, um, group. Right. And in terms of participant sentiment on GitHub Copilot, 
it's generally you can see here pretty much everything is positive, just like how positive it is. But what we can see is like um uh impact ability review and also existing code, definitely positive positive effect. To create documentation on the code, positive effect, <clears throat> ability to create a test for the code, positive effect. Time spent debugging code using GitHub Copilot, it says a little bit less time. Um, I think one of the infinable finds that maybe when uh, people reviewing the code generated by GitHub Copilot, you not necessarily understand why it generated that particular way. That's why you actually do a little bit um, so more uh, more time or it's not as efficient as we want it to be. All right. And then time to produce the same code with our GitHub Copilot. And what we will find is that it is the um, a little bit more time need to be uh, generated by the GitHub Copilot. <clears throat> All right. Uh, and then the quality of suggestion received, and you can see the second thing is that it, it will be useful or somewhat useful. And just uh, just suggestions aligns with project's coding standard, and what you, what you, we get back is actually it looks like do pretty well on that one. And with I would like to add on is that with the GitHub Copilot chat, the new functionalities, we believe that actually will further improve those findings to the fact that it's become a bit more intelligent in terms of how you can generate the code. Okay, so now, um, so I'll, I won't take um, 30 minutes. I think from this is the second last slide of uh, my presentation pack. What we try to say is that in ANZ, we got a lot of software um, engineers. We got a lot of engineers in the, um, the total employee and with those engineers, we got a lot of software engineers, and we write millions of lines of code per year. And with it, what you see here down there is the um, the percentage of how many times those engineers spend on the daily um, basis. How we get this data? We got an annual engineering survey, and then in that survey, we're asking how you spend your time, a typical time, how it looks like. And here is the the result we're coming back. What we show here is that for thirteen percent of the time they're looking for review requirements, twelve percent of the time they will um complete designs, twenty four percent they're creating code, twelve percent just reviewing code, so on and so forth. What we believe what GitHub Copilot can help is right from the um completely designed all the all the way to testing. Right. And however. We will see very clearly that uh, the writing code and reviewing code is definitely 100% helpful with GitHub Copilot. But you can expand it to, to testing, which we are doing some other additional experiment right now <clears throat> that we believe GitHub Copilot can be quite helpful for testing as well. <clears throat> and within that, say if um, the writing and reviewing code is 36% of the, say, 4,000 engineer. And that is actually is 1,440 as full-time employee equivalent by just doing that. So the, the, the argument is that if we can improve, say, 20, 30, 40% of the time we spent for those parts, which is like 30% of what 4,000 people does, and we have a substantial saving, should bring a lot of benefits for, for our organizations. And the other thing what I would like to end up my talk with is that with the um the annual uh, engineering survey is that uh we ask them the one of ask one of the question we ask them is that question eleven what other technology you would like to be work with <clears throat> and you, this is the real data what you can see is that copilot and AI um is actually you can see pretty much the biggest work. In this, um, in the answer that we receive from the old engineers, All right? So effectively, what we see here is that uh, with GitHub Copilot introductions, engineers on um, to report they are much happier than before. They ask for this particular tool, they like using it, and we can see they use it to even be um to improve their work. 
And right now we are doing a further experiment because we already roll out to 3,000 engineers inside the organizations. We would like to know how exactly you see um, for this particular experiment we're doing on a much, much controlled basis where um, the interview level of the uh, programming problems, I would like to see from end to end how it actually helping the engineers. We're doing it right now. I think we probably will um, release our result in the coming future. All right, thanks all. That's all I'd like to present.